Thank you, Alwyn, Brian, and Maria, Isaac, thank you. Um, what a beautiful day, amen? Wow, what a beautiful day. Um, last night, I love heavy rain, thunder, lightning. Um, it, it, it reminds me of who I am and where I stand in God's creation, amen? Um, and uh, yeah, last night was so beautiful and and. and as I was lying there, I, I couldn't sleep. I was just, just listening to this rain the whole time. And, and then this morning we are singing, um, Lord, just let it rain. And just open the floodgates of heaven and let it rain. And, 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 and that is what, I, that's what I, I pray and desire. My spirit cries out for it this morning is, is, is that the, the spirit of God will just rain down upon us this, this morning. And, and that the beautiful word of God will be ministered by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not by humans. Before we get into the word of God, please let's just open in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we are gathered here this morning, Lord, in this humble little church, this humble little town, Lord Jesus, to do but one thing, Lord, and that is to worship you as our God. Lord, you are worthy to be worshipped, Lord. Everything, everything, Lord, that has been created, was created to worship you, Lord. Lord, the beautiful skies at night, they were placed there for one thing, Lord, and that is to display your splendor as our God. That is something that no human can create, Lord. The beautiful nature that you have blessed us with in this country, Lord, has been placed there to worship you, Lord Jesus. Every morning before we open our eyes, the birds are singing praises, to the King of kings and the Lord of lords for the gift of life that he has given them. And we thank you for that, Father God. Lord, and as we are gathered together here this morning, as your people and as your body, I pray that the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ will do his perfect, gentle work in our lives, Lord Jesus. Just rain down a fresh anointing on us this morning. Take hold of our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our souls, our spirits, and cause it to submit to the truth of the word of God. Lord. We worship you, Lord. We love you with everything inside of us. We bring you glory, honor, praise, and thanks because it belongs to you, Lord. We pray and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, I, I've said this. I've said this my whole walk with the Lord, and I'm going to say it again this morning. This morning we are going to look at a beautiful truth of the Word of God. Absolute beautiful truth of the Word of God. I, I, I please pray and I ask humbly that you just bear with me this morning because if we, if we take a hold of the truth of what the Lord wants to share with us this morning, I can guarantee that somebody's life is going to change today concerning what we are going to, to share this morning. Amen. So, there's a, there's a question. I've, I've been serving the, the, the Lord and walking with the Lord now for 22 years, some, somewhere along there. And in churches, I've heard this one question come up over and over and over and over again from the congregation. And, and the question is, why must I be a member of a church? Why? Is it even biblical? So we're going to answer that question this morning because I like to look at the truth of the word of God instead of human opinion. Amen? So the truth of the word of God is going to minister to us this morning. Why must we be a, a member of, of a church? Why are churches pressing for the people to, to become members? Why? Is it because the, the churches want to, at the end of the month, show a, a, a piece of paper to say, I've got so many members in my church? Or is it because they want the bank account to grow? Or is it because they, they want the, the worship to, to be lifted? Why? What is the reason why churches are always saying, you must become a member of this church or that church? So we're going to answer it this morning. The Lord is going to answer it for, for us now. Um, the first thing that, that I want to start off with is the first thing that the Lord gave me when I was sitting down and preparing this with the Lord. 
sat down, opened my, my ears. That's why the Lord blessed me with such big ears so that I can hear his voice clearly. And uh, the first thing that the Lord said to me is covenant. Covenant. Amen? Covenant. Now, I am someone I do not like to promise people something. I don't. I hate it. I'm, I'm sorry for the, the strong word, but I do not like promising people something because I know as a human being, things happen and there's many times I cannot fulfill that promise. Then, people don't say, Jacques broke his promise. People say, that Christian broke his promise. So I am putting my king and my church in a very bad light. So I don't like making promises. Jesus even says to us in the word of God, don't make promises. Let your yes be your yes and your no be your no. That's it. Plain and simple. Because I don't know what is going to happen on Thursday. So how can I humanly promise someone that I'm going to do something on Thursday when I don't know if I'm even going to be there? Amen? So my yes must be my yes, my no must be my no. Okay. So the first thing that the Lord gave me was covenant. If you go through the word of God from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation, you will see that the, the, the Bible is drenched in a covenant from God, from the hand of God. Now, a covenant is the strongest promise that you can get because it is a promise that comes from God. It's not one that comes from man. So a covenant is an alliance that is made with God. Now, to, to, uh, to, to quickly describe that, if you go in the Old Testament and you have a look there, and, and, and you read about the kingdoms there, you will see that there were weak kingdoms and there were strong kingdoms. Amen? So a weak kingdom knew that it was only a matter of time and a stronger kingdom would move in there with their, their legions and they would plunder and plow through everything and, and, and they would demolish that kingdom. So what the weaker king would do is he would go to a stronger king and ask him, to set up a covenant between them. Now a covenant can only be broken by death. Only. And there's always blood involved. Always. So a covenant can only be broken by death. That is why when I stood before God, the day I got married to my wife, I said to God, until death, parts me and my wife. Not until my mother-in-law parts us. <laughs> Not until the bad bank account parts us. Not until the, 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 the depression and the worries of this world parts us. No, until death. It is a promise that I made to God. And as I'm standing here today, I will keep it. Because I'm accountable to God one day. And there simply is no excuse that I can give as Jacques Fouché to my king. That my king will one day say, oh, that's a good excuse. Okay, I'll give it to you. No. No. A covenant is a covenant and it can only be broken by death. So if a weak king went to a stronger king, made a covenant with them, the only way it can be broken is through death. If the weak king then broke that alliance somewhere uh, 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 along the line. The stronger king would come and kill him. That's it. Death. To break that covenant. Amen? <laughs> now this morning, the Lord wants to show us. Oh, this is so beautiful. I, I, I was crying so much this week. I'm going to try not, not now. Right. Very first scripture. I'm going to keep Isaac busy this morning. Isaac, Genesis 1, verse 26. Genesis 1 verse 26. Very first covenant that Father God lays down. Very first covenant. The Bible says, then God said, let us make mankind. Who's us? Father God and Jesus. Amen. Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and over all the wild animals and over all the creatures that are moving along the ground. First covenant. Amen. 
How can we say that's a covenant? Everything. I, I really do not care who, who says different to this statement. Everything belongs to God. Everything. Okay? And God in this case is the stronger king. And God makes an alliance with man and says everything that you see here that's mine is now yours. That's what happens in a covenant. Amen? The, whatever the stronger king had now becomes also the weaker kings. They join together. That's why when the Holy Spirit touched the disciples in the book of Acts and brought them together, the first thing that the, the Holy Spirit made them do is sell everything and bring it so that everyone has equal. Amen? Everyone is equal. Can you imagine a church like that, brothers and sisters in Christ? If all of us sitting here today take our salaries at the end of the month, put it in a pool, and divide it separately, no one would have more than the guy next to you. No one would have less than the guy next to you. Everyone would be equal. Amen? This is what the Lord is doing here. Genesis 1.28, please, uh, Isaac, just down from there. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in numbers, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Verse 29, then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of uh, the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. Again, God made it. He created it. But he's giving it to man. Amen? Then the Bible goes on and says, is it verse 30 that I'm now? Yes? yes. Verse 30. And to all the beasts of the earth and the birds in the sky and all the creatures uh, that move along the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food and it was so. Amen? And we know the story. God created, God created man. He created Adam out of the dust of, of, of the earth. That is why when the ladies do washing, you'll see that our collars are always brown. Amen? Because we are made of the dust of the earth. Amen? Just a, just a, a horrible joke there. Let's carry on. <laughs> So God creates, God creates Adam out of the dust. And the Bible says that the Lord said, it's not good for him to be alone. God didn't even want to be alone. Amen. God is so filled with love. He wanted to pass it on. So he created man to pass it on. So he said, it's not good that, that he, he, he lives. And he made him a, a helper he placed them together, and this covenant started with them. So the very first covenant in the Word of God was made through a couple. Amen? So I grow up in, in, in my parents' home. I, I go to boarding school at, at, uh, in a te teenager. Uh, I come back. I start working. I see a beautiful girl that the Lord points out to me. I ask the Lord, can I marry her? The Lord says yes. And I take her, and in our lives... The Lord starts our very first covenant through that. Amen? Through a couple. The Lord takes you and your wife or you and your husband, joins you together as a covenant. Amen? Now, we go on from there. Um, we, all, we all know, I just want to add this, we all know the, the, the history. Um, Adam and Eve had three sons. Started off with two, Cain and Abel. Cain got, got jealous, uh, killed Abel. Then they had a third son, Seth. And Seth, then um, the, the Lord took the, the generation of uh, Abraham and, and Noah through Seth. Amen? We're going to see that now. So it took 1,056 years from there to Noah. Amen? Okay. Now, the very first covenant in the Word of God was through a couple that the Lord joined together. Then the Lord saw that, that the earth was, it, it, it wasn't the way he wanted it to be and the way he created it. And the people that he established the covenant through had now passed on and new people had now arrived and they just, they, they just taken everything 
completely out of uh, context. And, and they'd been living like they wanted to live, and they were dismissing God. And so, so God chose one man out of the bloodline of Seth. And he said to him that through you, I'm going to save the world. And we can, we can pick that up in Genesis 9, please Isaac, from verse 8 to verse 17. The Bible says, Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you. This is the scripture right after they had exited the, the, the ark. They had just got off the ark. they back on. It's just their family now. And, and the creatures with them. Okay. So, and every living creature that was with you, the birds, uh, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living, every living creature on earth. Have a look how interesting this is, brothers and sisters in Christ. God establishes a covenant with Noah because of his love and obedience towards God. But everyone and everything associated to and with Noah is blessed with that same covenant. Amen? We must watch who we, who we draw close to us. Amen? We, the very, we're going to see that, that uh, a bit later. Verse 11. I establish my covenant with you never again will all life be destroyed by waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood that will destroy the whole earth. Verse 12. And God said, this is the sign of my covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you. A covenant for all generations to come. How blessed are we? that we can still visually see the covenant that God made with Noah. Huh? Almost 5,000 years ago. That we can still see that covenant. In, in this area, in my life, I've never seen as many rainbows as, as I've seen since we've landed here in New Zealand. They're just everywhere. It's, it's like there's, the, the, the Lord manufactures them here. <laughs> Amen? Wow. It's, the, the other day, taking the boys to the bus stop, we saw three. On the way there. Yeah, amen. <laughs> um, lost my train now. Verse 13. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and, and, and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth, and the rainbow appears in the clouds. Verse 15. I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind, Never again will the waters become a flood. It will destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, verse 16, whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. Last, last verse, verse 17. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on earth. What a blessing. Amen? Amen. So when I got married to my wife, the, the sign that the Lord gave me, the visual sign, my, my rainbow that, that I can see every single day is this. Amen? So I, I, I keep this wherever I go. Wherever I've had horrible accidents where, where my fingers swell up and, and they said to me, we're going to have to cut this off. I said to them, I'm first going to have to be dead for you to do that. You're not touching my ring. You can cut my finger off, but don't touch my ring. Amen? So, a, a, a visual covenant. Now, now, the Word of God, if you go through the Word of God, you will see the Word of God repeats itself over and over and over again. Um, Jesus said to us in the Word of God that nothing that was won't be again. So everything that happened in the Old Testament physically is happening now to us spiritually. Amen? So it, it repeats itself. Now I'm going to give you an example. God gives Adam and Eve the Garden of Eden. He says, this is yours. Everything is yours. Just don't touch that tree. That's it. Okay. What does Adam do? Adam goes and sins and he he does exactly what God tells him not to do. And he goes and he touches the, 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 the tree. 
Okay. He eats of the fruit of the tree that the Lord said he is not permitted to eat. So he falls there. Amen. Then God has to make a covenant with him to keep him alive. Amen. Now, God makes a covenant with Noah. And as they come out of the ark, Noah falls because of grapes. He goes and he makes wine and he's flat drunk and, and he sins against God. And there, that covenant's almost broken, but God renews it. Amen? So can we see a pattern here? We're going to see as we carry on how God makes a covenant with people and people are just not strong enough and they break it. But God is faithful in keeping his sight. Now, the next one. So the first covenant that was made was through a couple, Adam and Eve. The second covenant that we read in the word of God was made through a family, Noah. Now, doesn't that happen in our lives? So the first covenant in our life is when I get married to my wife. First covenant between me and her. Then we have children. Then there's a covenant in our family, the Fouché family. There's a covenant there. Amen. Can you see how the word of God is manifesting in our lives today? Amen. Then the next one. If we go to Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. Now, Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, Japheth. Nine generations of Shem had now passed, and we now get a man called Abram. Powerful, powerful man of God. We now get a man called Abram. We're going to pick up there. Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. The Lord said to Abram, go from your country your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. Verse 2, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be blessed. Verse 3, I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse them. There's that covenant. Amen. Amen. The, the weaker king says, they want to attack me. The stronger king says, they won't get close to you. We'll, we'll stop them. Amen. Then uh, verse 3, I will bless those who bless you. Uh, and whoever curses you, I will curse them. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. Amen. There's the next covenant that the Lord makes in the word of God with Abram. Then if we go... Uh, to Genesis 15, uh, please Isaac, verse 5 to 6. Genesis 15, verse 5 to 6. The Bible says, uh, God, he took him outside. This is God speaking to Abraham. Look up to the skies and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. Amen. When God came to Abram and said to him, you will be the father of all nations. He was 75 years old without children. <laughs> How does God work? Amen. Completely confuses our logical and analytical minds. All right. His, his wife is also moving to, to the, the, the older age. And, 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 and what does, just like Adam fell in sin, by taking the, the, uh, the fruit. Just like Noah fell in sin by making wine and getting drunk. Here comes Abram and goes to his wife Sarah. And his wife Sarah says, look, this is not happening. I'm, I'm barren. Take my maid. Amen. And he falls into sin there. The Lord didn't say do that. He went and did it. Can you see the pattern here, brothers and sisters in Christ? It repeats itself straight through the word of God. So... That is what happens. Um, he takes Hagar and he has a son with her called Ishmael. And then eventually Ishmael is the, the father of uh, the Arab nation. Amen. Um, then eventually God goes uh, back to, to Abraham, speaks to him again. And he gives Sarah uh, um, a, a son called Isaac. Amen. Um, we all know that, that story where the Lord commands him, Abram, to take his son and go and offer him as a sacrifice. 
So this is the next covenant that the Lord establishes in the word of God. The first one was with Adam and Eve, was a couple. The second one was with Noah and his family, which was a, a family. And the third one was Abraham. Uh, Abraham that, that, that then became Abraham. And the third one was um, uh, establishing a coven covenant with a tribe. Amen? So, I get married to my wife, I have children. The first covenant is between me and her. The second covenant is in our family at home. The third covenant is in my extended family, the other Fouché family. Amen? Can, can, can you see what's happening here in our lives? The word of God is physically manifesting in our lives. In the way that we live, we have a tribe as well. Amen? Your, your whole family, that's your tribe. That's the tribe that the Lord has given you. It is up to us to make sure we keep the first covenant in marriage, the second covenant in children, the, the third covenant in the tribe that the Lord has given us. In, in our extended family, don't stop until someone's dead. Keep on spreading the gospel to your family. Amen? Then, if we go from there, um, Abraham. From Abraham, then we go to uh, there's generations that, that have passed and the, the people of God have moved away from God. Okay. Then they get to a point where they cry out to the Lord, like the scripture says. They cry out to the Lord and the Lord says, I, I want to save you. And the Lord sends a man named Moses. Amen? Sends a man named Moses and we are going to pick that up in Exodus 31. Exodus 31 verse 12 to 17, please Isaac. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, You must observe my Sabbath. This will be a sign. Here's that covenant, the sign, the, 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 the rainbow. Here's the sign. This will be a sign between me and you for all generations to come, so you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. You must observe the Sabbath. Amen. Every time we come to church, we are adhering to a covenant that the Lord made with Moses. Amen? Now, the Bible goes on in verse 14. Observe the Sabbath because it is holy to you. Anyone who desecrates it will be put to death. Keep in mind, this is the Old Testament. Um, those who do any work on that day must be cut off from their people. For six days, work must be done, but the seventh day is a day for Sabbath rest, um, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on that day must be put to death. Keep, keep in mind again, that's the Old Testament speaking. Now, the Bible says in Genesis, God created uh, the heavens and the earth in six days, and the seventh day he rested. Does God need rest? No. That was the way that God established the covenant with this group. Amen? By saying that this is a day for me. You've got six days for yourself. You, in those six days, live it to the fullest. The seventh day is for me. I'm your God. I'm the one that puts breath in your lungs, blood in your veins, and a brain in your head. I am God. So the seventh day is for me. Keep it holy. Amen? Seek the Lord on this day. Worship God on this day. Live for God on this day. So here, the very first covenant that was made was with Adam and Eve, was with a couple. The next one was with Noah and his uh, family was with a family. The third one was with Abraham and a tribe. And then here now Moses comes and the Lord makes a covenant with a nation. Amen? So again, in our lives, this manifests. We get married, and that's our first covenant. Our second covenant is with our children. Third covenant is with the extended family, our tribe. And the next covenant, the fourth one, is with our nation. Amen? When, when we have successfully ministered with our tribe, those that want to and those that don't, we take those that want to, and then we minister to the nation. Amen? We first make sure our house is sorted, and our Jerusalem is built up. And is strong. Amen. We're almost done. Um, then, from there, um, Moses hands, hands
hands the leadership over to Joshua. Joshua takes them into the promised land. They, they are blessed. Like God says, they will be blessed because God doesn't lie. So they are blessed. But as soon as Joshua passes away, everyone goes and does what they want again. Okay, okay, can we see a, a pattern here again? So Adam sinned when he took the, the fruit. Um, Noah sinned when he took the grapes and, and made wine and got drunk. Abraham sinned when he took Hagar instead of, of uh, his wife. And Moses sinned because up until the very end, Moses completely lost it and sinned against God. Amen? So, so he, he did a few times, he did stuff that the Lord said he mustn't do. When the Lord said to him, take your staff and touch the rock, Moses didn't listen. He smacked him. He beat it. The Lord said, I, I, I didn't say beat it. Amen? So because of disobedience, unfortunately, he couldn't enter into the promised land, but the Bible says that God himself buried Moses. Amen? Because he was his friend. Then, um, then from, from Joshua, Joshua passes away, and we go through the word of God, and there's a bunch of judges, and the judges uh, take uh, Israel, and, and, and they try and, and rule and reign over them. It, it, it doesn't work out very well, so Israel goes to God, and they say, please, can we be like the other kingdoms? Can we please have a king? God says, yes, you can, and he chooses Saul, okay? So he chooses Saul, and he makes him king over Israel, but Saul isn't obedient, so God goes and looks for one who will be obedient. And this is where we pick up in 2 Samuel 7, from verse 8 to 9. God spots David. Amen? David, a young man. The Bible says, now then, I tell, uh, now then, tell my servant David. This is God speaking to the prophet. Um, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pastures, from uh, tending the flock, uh, and appointed you ruler over my people of Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies before you. Yes, that covenant that the Lord has made with, with him. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. Again, nothing belongs to David. It all belongs to God, but because of that covenant, they are now standing together. Amen. Then the, the, the next scripture, uh, 2 Samuel 7, 12 to 14. So it's just down from there, 12 to 14. When your days are over, listen how beautiful this is. The Lord is setting up the very next covenant through David here now. He's, he's telling him, when your days uh, are over, and you rest with your ancestors. I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, um, uh, to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. There's the next covenant, okay? Um, he is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. Who, who's, who's God talking about here? Jesus. He's setting up the next covenant by telling David that this is how much I'm going to bless you. Amen? Can you imagine what must have been going through that king's mind? Knowing that the king of kings and the lord of lords is going to come through his, his bloodline. Now, again, just like all the others, David goes and sins. His eyes falls on something that it shouldn't have fallen on and he completely loses everything. And he sins. And he has to go back to God and he has to ask forgiveness and, 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 and God fixes it. But because of the covenant between him and God, God keeps his word. Amen? Then, the very first covenant was made um, through a couple. The second covenant through Noah was made through a family. The third covenant was uh, made through Abraham, through a tribe. The fourth one was made through Moses, through a nation. And then the fifth one was made through David through a kingdom. Amen? Now again, you can look in your life and you can see where the kingdom fits in your life. Amen? Because in your nation that you live in, it, 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 is, it is split. So you either follow God's kingdom or you follow the world's kingdom. There's only two. Amen? Then the word of God goes on, almost done. 
Um, 1,030 years from David, we have this scripture. Luke 22, verse 19 to 20. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, comes into picture, blesses us for eternity. And this is what the Bible says, Luke 22, 19 to 20. He took the bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them saying, this is my body I give for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 20. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. Okay. Here is the final covenant that is established in the word of God, but there's a huge difference here. Out of all the five covenants before this, every single one of them sinned in a way. This last covenant, Jesus never sinned. Never. Making this covenant set in stone for eternity. Amen? Now, now we get to the question, do I have to be a member of a church? We get to that question now. 1 Corinthians 12, please, Isaac, in the King James. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12. Listen to what the Word of God says here. For as the body is one, and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also Christ. Amen? This is the first scripture that I, that, that I can give you. I don't have the time to, to do this. If you want, you can text me or email me. There is a hundred, one hundred scriptures in the New Testament concerning church membership. One hundred. Church membership is excessively important because it is a covenant that is established between us and God. Amen? Your church membership is exactly the same as your marriage to your husband or your wife. Amen? Does it make sense that I am married to my wife, but I visit other women during the week? No. Why would I want to church hop? Why would I want to sit in church A on, on this Sunday, next Sunday in church B, next Sunday church C, next Sunday church... Whose vision are you following? Who's your shepherd? Because all four of those churches give different visions. Whose vision are you following? Amen? And, and then this scripture that I'm going to take out of the, the word of God, I'm going to end with this scripture this morning. Hebrews 13, verse 17. Hebrews 13, verse 17. Listen to what the Bible says here. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account for you. Listen how it ends. Do this so that their work may be joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. Listen to what the Lord says here. Amen? Now, now, a lot of people like to take this scripture and say, this is concerning the government of your country. Submit to your government. Right. Hebrews 13 verse 7. Have a look what that says. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Does our government speak the word of God to us? No. No. The Bible is here speaking about your church leaders. Amen? Now, my question is that the Lord asked me. He knows the answer. He wanted me to. Okay. The question is, verse 17, I'm going to read again. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account for you. Okay. Now, the first question that came to my mind is, if there is no biblical requirement to belong to my church, which leaders should an individual Christian obey to and submit to? You understand? Does that make sense? If there's no biblical requirement to become a member of a church, who do you submit to? Who are your leaders? Is it church A or is it church B? Is it C or D or E or F? Which one? And, and, and the second question that came to my mind was, 
Me as a pastor, who will I have to give an account for? The Bible says to those who submit. Amen? And, and, and to be a, a church member is to submit to the leadership of the church. Now, I learned this from the very beginning when Jesus, I'm going to end with this, when, when I first met Jesus. Jesus, Jesus said to, to me and, and, and to my wife, and, and this is, a lot of people don't get this. My wife chooses, she's not forced to, she chooses to submit to me as her husband because the Bible says so. Amen? If I lead her astray, okay, I will have to answer for it one day, not her. She was following me. She was doing what the Word of God said. Amen? And, and it's exactly the same in a church setting. In this that we are doing here, and Pastor Sue is doing at her church. If you do not submit to those leaders, um, and Christ comes back one day, who must give account for, for you? Who's going to give an account for you? That's the first thing. The second thing is, if I do become a church member, and the Bible says here, um, you must have confidence in your leaders, you must submit to their authority, because they watch... Uh, over your soul, and they give an account, do this so that their work is a joy. I'm, I'm not saying carry your leaders around on a, on, on, on a gold platter, the, the whole, no. But, but if you trust that the Lord is speaking to your leaders and giving you a vision for this church and for Christian Harvest Center, and you follow it, the Bible says it's to your advantage by following it. If you go against it, and it was from God that the leaders were, were, were led. Then, unfortunately, when God comes back one day and says, Brother Brian, Brother John, um, as the leaders, um, did so-and-so, did Jacques fully submit to you? No, he didn't. He, he really didn't. Because this was our vision. He, he was pulling this side the whole time. Amen? And Brother Brian and Brother John can't lie to the Lord. The Lord knows the, the answers already. Amen? So this is why the Lord says, yeah, it's to your advantage. It's to my advantage to submit. If the leaders say yes, it's yes. If they say no, it's no. Because God is leading them. Amen? If you don't have confidence in the leaders, then it's, it's better for your soul. You find a church where you do have confidence in them. Amen? But biblically, it is correct for us to become members of a church because we cement ourselves in that covenant that the Lord started in, in uh, Genesis. Amen? Amen. If anything this morning was unclear, anything, from my mouth to your ears, Satan has got a way of turning, twisting, changing, uh, breaking things. If anything was unclear, please in Jesus' name come and speak to me. I will clarify it through, through the word. Amen? Um, so that in that way, we don't drive a wedge uh, between us and, and, and the truth. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to end with this and I'm going to say, if you feel that it is in your best interest to become a member of a church, um, wherever you decide, please speak to Brother Brian or uh, uh, Brother John um, or Pastor Sue. <laughs> Amen. So wherever you feel you are called to be a member, go and stand there. So that one day when Christ comes back, they can give an account for you and give a good account. Amen? Otherwise, if I'm not, if I'm not, I don't know who, I can't answer that. I don't know who will give account for me. Amen? I don't know. Make sense? Amen. Please, let's, uh, let's just end in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for your word and the truth of your word. We thank you, Father God, for, for what Jesus did for us, Lord, establishing that everlasting covenant, bringing us into the presence of Father God and releasing us, Lord, to rule over everything, Lord Jesus, as kings and queens, as, as princes and princesses. We thank you, Father God, Again this morning, for the gift of life, thank you for what you have entrusted us with. Thank you, Father God, that we are stewards of everything in our lives, Lord Jesus, everything. 
And just like an accountant, Lord Jesus, there's, there, there, there's a book that Revelation speaks of that everything is being written down, Lord. Everything. Every time I, I am good to your people, it's written down. Every time I am not good to your people, it's written down, Lord. So I pray today, Father God, in Jesus' name, that you will help us to, to live according to the word of God. To conduct ourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. To seek your face and your will in everything we do and say before we do and say it, Lord Jesus. So that we don't have to go back and try and fix an absolute mess that we made with our mouths. I thank you for that, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you will take your people into this new week, Lord. That you will bless them exceedingly abundantly above all that I ask or think. That a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit rain down on them, Lord Jesus, and that you will open up their lives to the godly possibilities that are already there. I thank you for that, Father. I pray and I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, family in Jesus. If anyone needs prayer for anything, I want to invite you, please come to, to the front and uh, the elders will pray for you. Amen. Have an awesome week.